Greetings, we'll cover a few details about, Humphrey Davy in his life in a succinct manner, here is a short rundown of his early years, education, career, notable works, accolades, honors, last years, and demise. A very early version of the arc lamp was created, by Sir Humphrey Davy, a British chemist and inventor from Cornwall, who also created the Davy lamp. Along with finding the elemental nature of chlorine and iodine, he is also remembered for isolating numerous elements using electricity, for the first time, potassium and sodium in 1807 and calcium, strontium, barium, magnesium, and boron the following year. Davy developed the new field of electrochemistry, while researching the forces, at play during these separations. In his laboratory, Davy is credited with making the initial discovery of clathrate hydrates. Also known as, Humphrey Davy, Sir Humphrey Davy, first baronet, famous as, British chemist and inventor from Cornwall, who invented the Davy lamp. Born, December 17, 1778, Penzance, United Kingdom. Died, May 29, 1829, Geneva, Switzerland. Siblings, John Davy, spouse, Jane Apries. Grandparents, Humphrey Millet, Elizabeth Adams, Grace Adams, Edmund Davy. Great-grandparents, William Adams, Sibella Yuzik. Notable student, Michael Faraday. Influenced, Michael Faraday, William Thompson, First Baron Kelvin, Charles F. Brush. Organization founded, Zoological Society of London. Discoveries, Inventions, Davy Lamp, Arc Lamp. Humphrey Davy was born into a middle-class family, on December 17, 1778, in Penzance, Cornwall, England. He had four siblings and was the oldest son. He attended Truro Grammar School and Penzance School, for his elementary education. Robert, his father, passed away in 1794, leaving the family in a precarious financial situation. Humphrey was John Bingham Borlase's apprentice because, he was the oldest son and had a sizable practice in Penzance. The little youngster, who was gifted with creativity, enjoyed writing poetry, and had aspirations of becoming a poet. He chose to forego poetry in favor of science after developing a stronger interest in chemistry and experimentation, as a result of beginning to work in the apothecary. He started a self-educational path, while working as an apprentice. His experiments in chemistry were heavily influenced by Lavoisier's famous book, Trait Elementaire de Chimie, which he utilized as a reference. Gregory Watt and Davies Giddy were impressed by Humphrey Davies' intelligence and competence, as he developed into a gifted chemist, later Gilbert. For the position of superintendent of the recently established pneumatic institution in Bristol, they suggested him to Dr. Thomas Beddoes, and he was given the job in October 1798. The pneumatic institution was established to research the potential therapeutic applications of various gases and to investigate the notion that inhaling certain gases could treat specific ailments. As the superintendent, Davy investigated the chemical makeup of nitrogen oxides and acids and pushed other members of the scientific community to investigate the effects of nitrous oxide inhalation. His experimental work was documented and published as Researches, Chemical and Philosophical, in 1800. His reputation as a respected chemist was cemented by the success of this paper, and he was shortly invited to give a lecture at the newly established Royal Institution of Great Britain in London. He moved to London in 1801, quit the pneumatic institution, and was hired at the Royal Institution as a chemistry assistant professor. The lab's director, and an assistant editor of the institution's journals. On April 25, 1801, Davy delivered his first lecture on the then relatively recent topic of galvanism. It received raving reviews, and within a few months, he rose to the status of a very well liked professor. Davy was appointed a full lecturer at the Royal Institution of Great Britain in June 1802. He had just turned 23 years old. In November 1804, he joined the Royal Society, as a fellow, and in 1807, he was appointed secretary. He joined the Geological Society, 
as one of its first members the same year. He would eventually lead the Royal Society, as its president in 1820. He discovered potassium in 1807, and used caustic potash to make it, KOH. The first metal to be separated, using electrolysis was potassium. As a forerunner in the field of electrolysis, he separated familiar compounds, using the voltaic pile, producing a variety of new elements, as a result. Magnesium, boron, and barium were originally isolated by him. He went to France in 1813 after being requested, by Galesac to look into a curious chemical, that Bernard Courtois had extracted, from seaweed. Working from his hotel room, Davy demonstrated that the mystery material was indeed an element we now know as iodine. Davy was urged to create a safety lamp that would provide illumination without bursting in flammable environments upon his return to England in 1815. As a result, Davy began experimenting with lamps for use in coal mines. He came up with the miner's safety lamp after conducting a number of experiments, but he didn't try to patent it. Davy received a baronetcy in 1818. At the time, Sir Francis Bacon was the first man of science to receive such an honor in Britain, even though Sir Isaac Newton and another man of science, Sir Francis Bacon, had already received knighthoods. This was followed a year later by the Royal Society Presidency. Michael Faraday, Davy's lab assistant, would later improve Davy's work and go on to become the more well-known and significant scientist. Faraday is reputed to have been Davy's greatest discovery. Faraday, the first Fullerian professor of chemistry, was later accused of plagiarism by Davy, which led him to halt all electromagnetism research until the passing of his master, Davy was a deist, according to June Z. Fulmer, one of his biographers. Davy, who had a cheerful but occasionally irritated disposition, exuded the typical enthusiasm and vigor in all his endeavors. He had a very creative mind, as evidenced by his poetry and occasionally by his prose, Coleridge remarked that if he had not been the first chemist, he would have been the first poet of his era, and Southey stated that he had all the components of a poet, he only required the skill. The joyful gifts of explication and illustration won him great favor, as a lecturer in spite of his ungainly exterior and odd style. His experiments were clever and quickly carried out, and Coleridge went to hear him, to augment his store of metaphors. The main goal of his life was, to become famous, and despite occasional bouts of petty jealousy, he never lost sight of the, cause of humanity, to use a phrase he frequently used in reference, to his development of the miner's lamp. His candor occasionally made him the target of annoyances, he could have avoided by using subtlety. He was careless with manners. The electrolysis pioneer, Sir Humphrey Davy is most known, for having made significant advances, to the understanding of chlorine and iodine's elemental nature. He created the Davy light, which is a significant invention. The safety lamp was initially developed, for use in coal mines to lessen the risk of explosions caused, by the presence of methane. It consists of a wick lamp with the flame enclosed, behind a mesh screen. The King knighted Humphrey Davy in 1812, in honor of his significant contributions to science, and he was given a baronetcy in 1819. In 1816, he received the Rumford Prize, for creating the Davy lamp. For his 1826 bakery and lecture, on the relation of electrical and chemical changes, he was awarded, the Royal Society's Royal Medal in 1827. At the top of Market Jew Street in Penzance, a statue of Davy was built in 1872, and is presently located in front of the Market Building, which is now owned by Lloyd's TSB. His birthplace is designated by a commemorative slate plaque at 4 Market, Jew Street in Penzance. Humphrey Davy School is a high school located on Coombe Road, Penzance. The Sir Humphrey Davy is the name of a pub located at 32 Alverdon Street in Penzance. The Davy Building is one of the University of Plymouth's science buildings. In Bristol, 
There is a street called Humphrey Davy Way, that runs next to the docks. He had a stroke in 1826, and never fully recovered from it. Consolations in Travel, a hugely successful, rather freeform collection of poetry, views on science, and philosophy, was written by him during, the latter months of his life. The work, which was posthumously published, was a mainstay of scholarly and personal libraries, for many years afterward, Davy spent the winter in Rome and turned 50, while hunting in the Campania. But he suffered a second stroke, on February 20, 1829. Davy passed away on May 29, 1829, in a room at Lodel de la Couronne in Geneva, Switzerland, after spending months trying to get better. He intended to be buried there, but he also asked for the burial to be postponed in case, he was still alive but simply comatose. For identical reasons, he refused to allow a post-mortem. The next Monday, June 1st, saw a public funeral, for him in the Plainpalais Cemetery, outside the city walls, as required by Jean Van Law. <laughs>